Okay, guys, hey, this is the last part to trunking. Um, and basically, this is a review of what we did. And what we did is we added our DS1, 001 V2, and you can see it's added here. Uh, so when we add this, we plug in our circuit, we turned up our CSU, we made sure it was working, we did the acceptance from the carrier, so we're ready to add our trunking. So why went it? I went in. I went in <laughs> and added my signaling group with, with no trunk selection, but just got that out of the way, told it which port to select for the primary D channel or the signaling, which is the 24th port of that card. I then added my trunk group and added some key items that you need to add. Everything else can stay default, but again, dependent on the customization that you're doing with your trunks, check with your provider and check the documentation to identify any of these fields more in detail, but essentially the things you have to have for this trunk to work is attack, the service type, and the ports you're adding for your trunk group to work, okay? And you can see in this example, I added just three ports out of my 23 ports available to me, because again, 24th port is for signaling, and you can't use it for B channels. And these are considered the B channels, and the 24th port is that D channel, or the signaling channel. All right, and I added my signaling group that I'm, that I'm trying to talk to, and I'm ready to go. So once your trunking is set up, it allows you to, to, to use your PBX to its full advantage because, again, the only way to accept calls is to have a trunk. The only way to make calls is to have a trunk. Now, a lot of you are going to say, oh, but I can call phone to phone. Well, that's fine, but that would kind of defeat the purpose of buying a multi-thousand dollar system to call phones to phones. Um, so, your trunking set up. We can now move into the more intermediate videos, which is things like... Um, incoming dialing or handling, you know, incoming dialing, setting up extensions, setting up hunk groups, you know, things like that. Um, because again, if my if my uh, provider is sending me DIDs or digits of 1,000 through 1,099, I don't have to do anything special because all I got to do is add the objects that have extensions assigned to them, and they will be they will be rang, they will ring when the signal is sent from your carrier. So if someone calls 1000 from the carrier side and it gets to my PBX, my phone's gonna ring. Same with a hunk group, same with a VDN. If those have extensions that are within that dialing range, um, they will ring or they will process as normal. So I uh, hope you like this quick series on trunking. Um, I'll be looking for your comments and questions. If there's anything in detail you wanna see, when it comes to trunking, let me know. Uh, I'll talk about SIP trunks later, but again, ask away, provide me any comments, feedback, things you'd like to see. Um, I do appreciate it. Thanks for watching, subscribe, and I'll be doing more of these. I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye.